Well, let's review the key term for paraphilic disorders. The DSM-5 explains that the term paraphilia refers to any intense or persistent sexual interest other than sexual interest in genital stimulation or preparatory fondling with phenotypical normal, physically mature, consenting human partners. The presence of a paraphilia does not equal a diagnosis. A paraphilic disorder is a paraphilia that is causing current distress or impairment to the individual or a paraphilia that is satisfied at the risk or harm to another. The paraphilic disorders listed in the DSM-5 are not an exhaustive list, but were included because they are more commonly seen than a number of other paraphilic disorders, including some of which have the potential to be harmful to others and are classified as criminal offenses. The DSM-5 identifies eight specific paraphilias based on the stimuli associated with the sexual fantasies, urges, or behaviors. They include Exhibitionistic disorder, exposure of one's genitals, fetishistic disorder, use of non-living objects often involving a specific tactile sensation, fraturistic disorder, rubbing against or touching a non-consenting person in a sexual manner, pedophilic disorder, attraction to prepubescent children, sexual sadism disorder, infliction of pain, humiliation, or suffering, sexual masochistic disorder, experiencing pain, humiliation, or suffering, voyeuristic disorder, observing other sexual activity, and transvestic disorder, cross-dressing. Paraphilias may be egodystonic or egocentonic. Some individuals with paraphilia experience guilt, depression, or a sense of immorality, whereas others may view the disapproving reaction of others as the only negative aspect of their sexual proclivities. However, if individuals with a paraphilia act out on their sexual urges with a non-consenting partner, for example, in the cases of exhibitionism, fraturism, voyeurism, pedophilia, or sexual sadism, they need not experience distress in order to meet the criteria for the diagnosis. These sexual fantasies, urges, or behaviors must be present for at least six months in order to meet the diagnostic criteria. Sexual dysfunctions often co-occur with paraphilias. The presence of a paraphilic stimulus may become necessary for any sexual arousal to occur. Individuals diagnosed with a paraphilia may seek out occupations or hobbies that allow them to access their preferred sexual stimuli. For example, individuals with pedophilic disorder may work in a toy store or individuals with fetishes for lingerie. Paraphilic behaviors tend to increase when a person is facing psychosocial stressors in the presence of other mental disorders and when there are increased opportunities to engage in the paraphilia. As individuals grow older, their paraphilic fantasies, urges, and behaviors often decline. Paraphilic disorders are overall diagnosed more frequently in men than in women, but prevalence for severe diagnosis is unknown. Paraphilic tendencies often emerge during childhood or adolescence, but may not reach higher levels of elaboration and definition until childhood. For some paraphilic disorders, the nature of transvestism is often misunderstood, as it is commonly confused with gender dysphoria and homosexuality. In transvestism, a man dresses in women's clothing for the purpose of sexual arousal. Arousal is usually due to the femininity of the attire. If the arousal is associated with tactile sensations, for example, the feel of silk undergarments, it is specified as with fetishism. In many cases, the man becomes aroused by imagining that he is a female, specified as with autogenophilia. In some cases, cross-dressing may lose its erotic appeal over time and be employed as a means of combating depression, easing anxiety, or evoking a sense of peacefulness in the person. Additional course specifiers indicate in a controlled environment and in remission. The presence of fetishism makes it less likely that a man with transvestic disorder will experience gender dysphoria, while the presence of autogenophilia in a man with transvestic disorder increases the likelihood of simultaneous gender dysphoria. The most effective primary interventions for paraphilias include cognitive behavioral techniques. In covert sensitization, the individual is taught to associate the sexually arousing stimulus with a negative consequence. Aversive conditioning occurs in the imagination rather than in vivo. In orgasmic reconditioning, the individual learns to become aroused in response to a more appropriate stimulus. This is accomplished by having the man masturbate to his typical inappropriate stimulus, but immediately prior to ejaculation, the man switches his fantasies to a more appropriate sexual stimulus. 
With repetition, this practice helps a person think about the appropriate stimulus earlier and earlier in the masturbatory episode, to the point that it replaces the inappropriate stimulus entirely. In satiation therapy, the man masturbates to orgasm while fantasizing about an appropriate stimulus, then continues to masturbate past the point of orgasm while fantasizing about paraphilic images. This eventually reduces the man's arousal in response to the paraphilic stimulus. These methods are more effective in treating paraphilias than in so-called chemical castration, in which sexual arousal and fantasies are eliminated through the administration of testosterone-reducing drugs. Well, let's practice with a question from paraphilic disorders. A man who dresses in women's clothing for the purpose of sexual arousal is most likely to be diagnosed with Answer A, transsexualism. Answer B, gender identity disorder. Answer C, transvestic fetishism. And answer D, sexual masochism. Answer C is a correct choice, as men who dress in women's clothing for the purpose of sexual arousal are defined as having transvestic fetishism. Answers A and B are both incorrect, as a transsexual person identifies with a gender not his or her own. Although gender identity disorder, for transsexualism, is often confused with transvestic fetishism, it's not a paraphilia. Answer D is also incorrect, as sexual masochism is a paraphilia, but entails to derive satisfaction from experiencing pain, humiliation, and suffering during sex.